This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show today, coming to you from the historic Women's Club of Hollywood, celebrating the iHollywood Film Fest after party and rock concert for the premiere of the Paul Gervasi film, The Original Charvel Gang, talking with actor and legendary bassist for Quiet Riot, Great White, Dawkin and Lynch Mob, Sean McNabb. How you doing? It's good to be able to shake hands yeah, again. Yeah, it is. Just give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what's important about the original Charvel Gang film. Well, my good friend Paul Gervasi, super talented. Um, I did a movie called Cherry Future with him that he wrote and directed. He gave me a nice part in there and, and kind of wrote it to me. And we still joke around. I'll, I'll go, that was a Jakeism. He wrote this character and it, it just kind of became me. And we became friends. We were friends before that, but we really bonded in that process. And then when he started this thing, I go back with. Grover and Wayne many years, you know, Quiet Riot days and all that stuff. So I, I know them both. He wanted some insight on that and I was blessed that he asked me to be a part of it. I would do anything for the man. He's he's that guy. He's uh, talented. He can put stuff together. He can edit. He can shoot. He can just make everything happen and uh, it's inspiring to be around. You've been working with Gilby a lot. You yeah. recorded the new Gilby album and it's awesome. Tell me Thank about you. what you love about working with Gilby. Well, first of all, he's my friend, you know. Uh, we've been friends since uh, I was in a band called House of Lords. And we went down to Tijuana, Mexico and opened up a hard rock down there when he was in Guns. So I've known him that long. This is back to like 1992, I think. Uh, we've been friends that long and, you know, he's just a great guy, so talented. We've got the motorcycles in common, you know. I've learned a lot from him about the older bikes and things, but we do a lot of riding together, but he's just such a Americana rock and roll dude and he, he's my bro you know and uh, I'm honored to be on his new album I'm not on the whole thing I'm on three or four tracks the album's called Gospel Truth it's a kick-ass rock record which you know in this day and age you, we've, we've got to grab those and give them big giant hugs because that's keeping rock and roll alive why do you feel your relationship has lasted so long as friends and also musicians um, I, I'm attracted to cool people that are don't have any agendas or attitude and he's just been one of those friends for me that is uh, always keeps it real uh, I love his wife Daniela and Frankie is his daughter's a up-and-coming musician too and just the whole family keeps it real you know and that's those are the kind of people I like to surround myself with and you are also p part of the Harley team. I don't know if you guys all ride Harleys, but the, you're riding the big rum, 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 rum. It's right, parked right outside. I'm just coming from another film fest, but I, I rode and we ride. You know, we do this for real. You know, we're, we're not posers on those bikes. So. Well, Daniela, she, she posted the other day on Instagram, eight hours or something on the back of the bike. Like they went somewhere for eight hours. How do you guys deal with that kind of stuff? They did more than that. Uh, I think Kings of Chaos had a gig in New Mexico and they rode down and did the whole tour, Taos, all that, you know, made a made a trip out of it and did the gig and rode home. How much is clean living involved in your success? Uh, it's got a huge uh, amount to do with it. I, I've been sober 16 years. Um, you know, I came, I was a product of the 80s, you know, excess was was alive and well, and I'm glad to have lived through it, but I realized that it wasn't working for me anymore, and it's, it was just my choice. I, I don't judge whatever people do, but for me, it was a huge step in the right direction, and uh, just gave me some clarity, which allowed me to make better decisions and work harder. What was the turning point? What woke you up? Honestly, um, I had a daughter that wanted nothing to do with me, and it was killing me, and that was the catalyst for me getting sober, and I've got a beautiful relationship with her today. I've got a grandson that's never seen me fucked up, and uh, that's the important shit. How did your musical life change after that? Well, um, I think I was more hireable, maybe. Um, 
I don't know, you know, they, I, I had some great times and did some great things and made some great records while we were all screwed up, you know? And a lot of artists have, but I, I hear the body of work that I've accumulated since uh, in the last 16, 16 years, and it sounds pretty good to me. What was your? What would you say was your highlight from your time in House of Lords? Uh, making the record, Demons Down, with the great Tommy Aldridge on drums, um, Greg Jafria, James Christian. Uh, there was a bunch of a few different guitar players. Tim Pierce, Mitch Perry, and Chick were on the record, but doing a record with Tommy Aldridge from Black Oak, Arkansas and Ozzy and Pat Travers and all that, that was the highlight for me just to have my name right under his on the record. That's That was a big deal. How would you describe your bass tone on that record? Um, it was pretty good. I think I get a better tone these days. I, I You know, hopefully you get better at what you do as you go. And I think I'm much better at recording now, 30 some odd years later than I was then, you know, we got it done back then, but I think it's hopefully evolved to another level. What was your favorite tour that House of Lords went on? What was the most memorable tour? Here's the crazy part about that is uh, House of Lords, that particular record, we never really got to tour. We were offered some tours and we never really got to do them. So um, we got kind of short sighted on the, the tours in House of Lords on that. But I still have fans coming up to me all over the country and the world going, man, I love this Demons Down record. I, I love every song on it. And, you know, that's that's a testament to the work that we did, I think. That was Greg's band, Greg Jafria's band, yes. right? Did Greg handpick you for that gig? And if so, did he give you a reason why? He did not. I, actually, I got the gig because uh, my friend Doug Aldridge wow. recommended me. And then I went down and auditioned. They liked what I did. And... Um, you know, it just seemed to fit. I had the right look at the time, and uh, it, it gelled. You brought up Doug. Amazing. He's an amazing human being and an amazing guitar player. Uh, he's on tour with the Dead Daisies right now with Glenn Hughes and Tommy Clefitos. Oh, yeah. So now, what do you think of the Glenn Hughes version of the Dead Daisies? Well, anything Glenn does, he makes it better, yeah. you know, and uh, he's just, he's rock royalty. He's also a friend of mine, but... He's, he's like next level, you know, so whatever, he opens his mouth and everything gets better, you know, straps on a bass, everything gets better. I can't wait to see the gig when they come to L.A. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. And Doug's a bro, too, you know, he's um, he also rides in that Hollywood Riders Club that we have. And, uh, yeah, he's a bro. Now, you guys are all, you see, this is a cool thing that I like about you guys. You're all family men. You love your wives. You love that family thing. You like coming home. What's the secret to that? Well, I mean, the communication is everything. We, we know that. Um, I think we've got to let our significant others ha do what they want to do when they want to do it. And they've got to let us do what we want to do when we want to do it. And then we come together, like two film festivals tonight and then I'm going to go home and have date night with my wife and take her out to sushi and we'll debrief about the day. She did what she wanted to do with some fashion stuff. I'm doing the film stuff and music and we'll debrief about it later over some sushi. What's, now this is super important in relationships. When you have a success, does she celebrate that success with you and vice versa? Oh yeah, we're very supportive. You know, that's a huge part of relationships is being supportive of one another and, and uh, you know she does so much great work for the community and it's really inspired me to do that too um, I just finished a live stream with the DO Cancer Fund which I can't tell you too much but on July 11th um, there's a live streaming event for the DO Cancer Fund to benefit cancer research at UCLA which we've already done some great work over there hopefully we're gonna write a big fat check and uh, we're all just, we want to cure, you know, just like everybody else does. She inspired me to do more uh, charity work and do what I could, just watching her. It's really been great being a, I'm a board member on the Ronnie James CEO Cancer Fund. It's, it's a blessing. What musical projects did, do you have coming up so that we can look forward to? Well, I've turned, um, 
I'm in a couple of bands, but I've turned three singles in COVID, which I don't, if it wasn't for the lockdown, I may never have had the time to do that. So my first one uh, is on Cleopatra Records called Born Under a Bad Sign. It's a little blues song. And I've got two more that are in the can right now. We're just mixing it. And Gilby's mixing it for me, um, which he does a fantastic job. And, and uh, I can't tell you the songs, but I can tell you their covers. And one's a Steely Dan song, and one's a Billy Preston song. What Steely Dan song did you pick? I can't tell you yet. Oh, man, because, I mean, those are hard. They were not easy, but it was a song I always loved, and uh, I've got horns on both songs, and a bunch of really great players. If you could have written any song, what song would you have written? Wonderwall by Oasis. You like it? Yeah. Right. I wish I wrote that song. That song is so damn cool. Five Desert Island Discs. Led Zeppelin two, Montrose album with all the hits on it. Van Halen two. One of my favorite records of all time. The Allman Brothers, uh, live at the Fillmore. Robert Randolph and the Family Band. He's a slide player, uh, like a dobro player, electric. Uh, any Robert Ra Randolph record uh, would work. Who, who do you think, as a kid, inspired you to pick up a bass? Uh, John Entwistle, um, John Paul Jones, Chris Squire from Yes, um, Greg Lake from ELP, and Getty Lee. Now, all, all the guys you just mentioned all have a very trebly, in-your-face tone. Chris Squire, Getty Lee, it's all like up front in the mix. Yeah, they changed our instrument. They brought it to the forefront, and I, I love them for that. Uh, but I'm okay just playing as simple as possible. Or Mozart. Yeah, so you like more of a warmer tone for your sound. Yeah, I just want to hear the notes, you know. I don't like it when it's a big wash, you know. I, I want to hear clarity in the notes and a little bit of grit on there, maybe a little bit of distortion, but not too much. But I like that fat Fender sound. Uh, Fender Precision or Fender Jazz? Precision with a jazz pickup in the back. Yeah, those jazz pickups, they give you that that tone. Yeah. More of more, more like string tone. Yeah. You get a little bit of Jocko along with the rock pickups, you know. Did you ever meet Randy Rhodes? I never did. But I saw him two weeks before. I saw him on the first Diary of a Madman tour. I saw him at the Circle Theater in Indianapolis. Uh, it was Ozzy and Def Leppard. They were all about 15 or 16. And then I saw him two weeks before he died, God rest his soul, um, at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis on the Diary of a Madman tour. And then what about Eddie Van Halen? Absolutely new Eddie. Um, this is a crazy story. So Eddie asked me to join this band called Private Life that he was producing. And I turned him down. I don't know what I was thinking. We had our... Our own record deal at the time, Paul Shortino, myself, and Mitch Perry called Bad Boys. Uh, we were trying to do our own thing, and I turned, I'm the one guy that turned down Eddie Van Halen, but uh, we became friends, and we, I played with them when I was in Dock, and we opened for Van Halen uh, at Kadat in Wisconsin, the rock fest there, and he remembered me, and we, we were neighbors, and he couldn't have been nicer. You know, he's just that guy, you know. What do you think of the Mammoth Wolfgang VH album? I've only heard the singles, and I like the singles, so if, it, if the rest of the album or anything like the singles, uh, that's going to be huge. His voice, man, his voice is so pure, and the guitar tones and the bass tones, the guitar tone is so shunk, gunk, gunk, like heavy. And he's able to make pop music, like commercial music. Out. Yeah, I think he's getting it done, man. I, I'd love to hear the whole record, you know. All right, Sean. God bless you, brother. Thank it's you good so seeing much. you. Thanks, Thanks for having finally, me. We finally get to talk. I know, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, okay? Oh, man. All right, this is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show with Sean McNabb signing off. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you. The Blaring Out Show.